try not to eat or drink for a few hours after getting your wisdom teeth taken out. <laughs> Hi, this is Dr. Daniel Choi with North Texas Dental Surgery, and I'm about to go over some post-op instructions that you should probably follow after having getting your wisdom teeth extracted. So you might've found me just on the internet or you had your wisdom teeth extracted with us, but I just wanted to go over some of the most common questions that we have after getting your wisdom teeth extracted. So rule number one, uh, try not to eat or drink for a few hours after getting your wisdom teeth taken out. So you wanna make sure that you get some nice solid blood clots back there because We'll go over this in a little bit, but we just really want you to avoid something called dry socket. Dry socket is basically when the blood clot becomes dislodged from your jaw, which, you know, think of it like a scab, you know, you're losing that scab. Well, if you lose that scab where your wisdom tooth is trying to heal in that socket, um, basically you can get like essentially dry exposed bone, which can be extremely painful. So um, these instructions are really geared towards helping trying avoiding dry sockets. So. Um, again, try not to eat or drink for a few hours after getting your wisdom teeth extracted. So drinking water for medication, obviously okay. Um, so don't worry about that. Again, just don't immediately go and try to eat a meal or drink a lot afterwards. Um, try not to use a straw for at least a week because that suction motion can kind of like um, create like, um, like the, the, the clot to become dislodged within your bones. So definitely try to avoid um, suction with the straw. Um, also, and do not smoke, okay? Like smoking is horrendous. The nicotine and all its effects and all the chemicals from smoking or vaping can really cause um, issues with healing and really tends to cause dry socket in patients. And not only are we talking about patients that are smoking after the procedure, but even if you were smoking before heading into the procedure, you are way more likely at risk to experience dry sockets. So again, do not smoke before or after the procedure. Um, don't spit excessively, okay? So um, I know some patients we've seen in the past, they just keep spitting, spitting, spitting because they taste a little bit of blood in the mouth. You're not really allowing that blood clot to form. So again, please try not to spit excessively. Um, also, to avoid infections, avoid foods that have little seeds in them, like sesame seeds, jalapeno seeds, all these little types of things, popcorn kernels. Um, avoid foods for like the next month after these, uh, um, these wisdom teeth extractions because if those get caught in the socket, those can lead to pretty serious infections. I have seen patients over the years um, have some pretty um, gnarly infections from uh, popcorn or uh, you know, we go in there and we find like popcorn kernels afterwards or we also see, um, I had a patient that was in college um, literally about a month after his extractions um, had a severe infection. Um, got him on some antibiotics, he was fine. But you know, we did a little exploratory procedure to see what actually caused that infection. And lo and behold, there was a huge jalapeno seed in there. So again, definitely make sure you avoid foods that um, are hard to break down and they can get in the sock and cause major infections. Um, so what we also want you to do is we're gonna send you home with plenty of gauze and this right here, this irrigation syringe, okay? So this irrigation syringe, what it really allows us to do is you can fill this up with some liquid. Um, one of your prescriptions is gonna be chlorhexidine, uh, uh, comes in a brown bottle, it's a blue rinse, but it's an antiseptic rinse that you wanna draw into the syringe and really flush out that socket, okay? And get all that debris from food and whatever might get caught in there. And, you know, again, I remember getting my wisdom teeth removed as a teenager, and I remember that frustration of getting things caught down there. Um, so again, this will be your best friend in really getting all those materials out of there. So again, we'll send you home with this little irrigation syringe. So you wanna make sure that you use that about four or five days after the procedure, not too soon again, because we want you to avoid dry socket. Um, and what you want to do is again irrigate after all your meals so that you can really help uh, keep that socket clean free of debris again at low risk for infections and help you to heal faster okay um, another thing is brushing so patients asking this question can i brush back there absolutely you want to brush normally okay you want to keep that area clean so that you lessen your chance of infection so again be ginger back there be gentle like don't be gouging down into the sockets make sure that you brush um, gently back there but again you want to keep your teeth nice and clean um, another thing that patients always ask me too, can they wear the retainer? Absolutely, you go, you're allowed to wear your retainer immediately after the procedure, okay? Um, bleeding, so we'll send you home with plenty of gauze um, and we'll even send you home with gauze inside your mouth. Um, you know, and we're never gonna dismiss a patient that has um, a lot of bleeding, obviously. So 
um, you know, you might have some bleeding when you take the gauze out, you know, when you go home, you'll see some traces of the blood and the saliva that makes that make it look like the, the, the gauze is more saturated with blood, but really it's not. Um, we just, you know, honestly, you're going to taste a little bit of blood that day. You're going to taste blood the next day. Just because you see a little bit of blood on the gauze does not mean that, you know, you have, you know, you're hemorrhaging blood and you need to go to emergency room or come in immediately. But uh, if you have any concerns about bleeding afterwards, by all means, please call us right please call the office please call you know my cell phone emergency phone number after hours and please come in and we'll see you basically um, to help address any potential bleeding that you may have in uh, my nine years of practice and again having seen over 10,000 cases of wisdom teeth I've actually seen um, a, pa a case where a patient was bleeding excessively and that was a freak occurrence because that was actually happened about 10 days after the procedure so um, again very 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 um, like you know like just low chance of experiencing bleeding like that. Uh, most of the times, you know, again, we send you home with the gauze, just use it in your mouth and uh, make sure that, uh, you know, you, if you do have any excessive bleeding, just put some gauze back there, put a lot of forces back there. Your jaws are capable of producing a lot of forces. So just make sure you bite really hard so that um, you can produce that force to, you know, like clamp down on any bleeding and, you know, cause it to clot. So again, in the event of any excessive bleeding, please contact the office during a regular hours or call um, you know, or text me um, after hours. Uh, medications, so we send you home with plenty of medications. So we give you antibiotics. We definitely always want you to finish those out. We also give you ibuprofen, um, should you be able to take that or some sort of NSAID, we'll give you um, ibuprofen. We want you to be on that every six hours. Um, and if you aren't able to take that due to kidney issues or whatever issues or allergies to ibuprofen, we'll prescribe you some other sort of uh, NSAID or um, any other type of painkiller. We also do tend to provide um, other excessive, I mean, painkillers um, in the event that you have any excessive pain too. So we always give that to you uh, preventatively to make sure that you don't have any sudden pain like later on if the ibuprofen is not enough. Um, again, make sure you finish your antibiotics. Um, swelling, so swelling is a common question. You know, Everybody has different levels of swelling. You know, we have cases where you're a teenager and you have no swelling at all. And we have cases where you're a teenager and you have a ton of swelling. Again, every case is a case by case basis. This is something that we can actually, because we have so much experience doing these, we can actually look at your CT scan and tell you, you know, kind of based off your age and, you know, you know, your bone density, all these things and your, the way that your wisdom teeth are like coming in, we can tell you how much swelling that you're gonna have, you know, and if you are at risk for high amounts of swelling, we can give you certain medications such as like a Medrol dose pack or steroids to get them into your system before your wisdom teeth extractions to help, you know, help alleviate so much of that swelling. Um, also icing, you know, uh, make sure that, you know, we, we have our ice packs at our office, make sure we make sure that you go home with the ice pack um, and you want to wear that all day. And also if that like warms up, then you want to use a frozen bag of vegetables and use that on your face all day, just ice all day to help really limit that swelling. Um, sleeping with your head elevated is really um, a, a helpful measure too, to, you know, to just help reduce the swelling over the next few days. And again, swelling. Um, peaks at different times for everybody. Some people swell the most the next day. Some people swell the most the third or the fourth day. So don't be alarmed if you see quite a bit of swelling the third or fourth day. It's totally normal and it should start coming down after that. Um, again, uh, let's see here. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. So, you know, any other like questions that you have other than these for your, your wisdom teeth extractions, definitely make sure that, you know, you give us a call during regular office hours. And if you have any questions, please feel to free, uh, reach that emergency um, contact number that I provide you. Um, and typically we answer best by text. Okay. All right. Thanks.